The sign is coming up on the right, Cortina. We're in. This is it. We're in. I'll just film at the hotel now. We're in. This is Cortina. Welcome. We made it. Well done, Swampy. Well done, Swampy. Wow. He did it, Swampy. Look at this. Bye, Cortina. Turn right, SS fifty one, towards the Biarco.
out of Italy, we're halfway through Austria and right ahead on the home trip you see the Alps. So we're going for the Alps next on the way home. Alp trip on one of the passes now. Let's get past this Jeep and we'll go through the aisle then. I think Richard informed me that there's a HGV ban on Sundays which would explain why these roads are a complete breeze. There's no stress or anything when the roads are like this. It's not the miles that do it, it's the wagons and um, having to keep moving in and out of the lanes. If you can just stay in the same lane at 70, I think it's a bit of a cruise really. So a good day uh, to drive it, try and get the bulk of the work done on a Sunday. I'm not sure if that applies to Germany and France, the HGV ban, we'll find out soon. But it's a lot easier so far on the uh, Austrian Autobahn. Very smooth so far quite leisurely to be fair not feeling the miles at all not that you really do in swampy it's quite a, a nice long distance machine but um, as you saw on the video earlier on this is the bonus footage of course if you're brave enough to watch the, the uh, all one and a half hours then you're braver to be carried on watching this bonus bonus footage but yeah uh, clearer roads slightly less traffic but just a better flow not as uh, crazy as well today a bit more much more laid back today this is a Sunday I think it's the 1st of August or well, could be the 31st of July I think it is the 31st of July crossing the Alps then soon I'll we'll give you an update we'll get some we're gonna stop on the Alps as well and then I get a something to eat it's now half two so past dinner time I need to get some food we're uh, programmed to hit Ghent at quarter past 11 tonight, 8 hours 44 minutes. Now I might not do the full drive, I'll see how we feel. If uh, I can't make it, I'll just stop off as usual. So moving good so far on the trip back. Okay, looks like we might get caught up uh, in a uh, low cloud. Bit of a, a weather trap here. It's looking quite grim ahead. So, we'll see. Traffic's now showing a, a 15 minute hold up. Uh, just to show you there, it shows. You see that little red box just showing an icon with a car. 15 minute delay. It's probably due to the weather going across the Alps here. Low cloud and rain. Let's see how we get on. Saw one of those uh, Austrian hot dog stands and when you get the urge for a hot dog not often but uh, why not if you don't have an Austrian hot dog let's have an Austrian hot dog nah, give me a hot dog well you ain't kidding it. <laughs> it's chucking it down and we're at the hot dog stand and everyone's gone and who can blame them that's the heavy rain that they forecast coming in now pretty strong we've got to get through this over the Alps so wish me luck. So uh, a nice Austrian hot dog there on an Austrian hot dog stand. You get a real nice uh, a real nice uh, hot dog with the um, the hot dog itself. It's in a toasted bread. You get the gherkins and uh, a couple of little uh, sauces with it. Very good but it's absolutely opened up for heavy rain. Let's get the keys in. Let's get out. Just check the castle out. Okay, so here's that low cloud hitting us. Bit of a slow crawl up the pass. Every swampy video got rain on it, hasn't it? I'm not too tired yet. Hot dog was good. It's good because no one's tailgating. I've had no tailgating on the whole trip so far today, which really takes the stress off when you don't get anyone pushing you. So it's been uh, good motorists so far. Happy motorists. Place like this, the rain can look good.
kind of suits it sometimes. See there, the peak there. I think this route cuts sort of between the mountains as opposed to straight over the top of them. This is a fern pass. Quite a gentle way of crossing, I think it doesn't put any pressure on the car particularly. Nothing stationary. This is the delay we were discussing. Not much for you to see here. Move along. Little Austrian stop. It's a little village here we've got next to the train tracks. There's the swamp monster. He's doing good and we're taking little breaks. I'm not going to batter it this time because we've done the mission so we can just cruise back. Well I have got to be on the 11.20 ferry on Tuesday but I think we'll be alright. So how about this for a nice picturesque setting church there. Might even get a train come past. There's a guy on the platform there. Shall we wait for a train and do that? You never know. We could do that. There could be a train. The sort of activity people on platforms. So that's a clue. There's a man over there, a man on the bike over there. I don't often use the zoom. Man disguised as a lamppost there, look at that invisible. James Bond style, right behind the lamppost, look at that. Clever. He knows how not to be filmed. Nice though, look at that, how lovely. Get a deck chair out and there. Uh, yeah, get a deck chair out, there's the swamp monster. Picking up a bit of grub now. One monster in Austria, random town. Yeah, so lovely. Take your little panoramic spin round. I want the train to come. All right, that was Lahn. Now we're going to Wengel. I've wangled it and got into Wengel. And then there's Mr. Hoff and that's the, the Weindelsthof, the Strausenhauser, the Wasser, the Sleidenhausen, after 300 old yards, Mazda there, look at that! Right. <laughs> old Mazda! The sliding nose. Them and Hell's Angels. Don't mess with them, boys. Off they go.
Germany! Here we go, Germany. Oh, we're moving on okay, we've got some bad traffic. You can see on the left hand side, it's a solid wall. Has been for, for them lot for a while. I've, I've had some bad traffic, but they got it worse coming into Austria than getting out. I can only presume it's weekend holiday traffic, that. We've got a 70 mile run now, a 67 mile run. I'm hoping this goes smooth. Let's see if this truck business really... Looks good so far. Okay, so this is a bit better. We can do uh, 90 now, no problems, because we're not breaking any laws. Uh, Swampy's happy at 85, 90 with a fifth gear, of course. So we're flying along the autobahn now, making uh, making up some time. We just uh, bomb along whatever we want. Um, just keep our eye on the stopping distance. That's about all. That stopping distance you see in front of me there. That's why I wouldn't leave it any less than that at this speed anyway. So I'll keep my eye on it and we'll just uh, drift up between 70 and 90 depending on the road conditions. Okay, so looking good on the autobahn. Uh, nice drive, you know. It's just what you want. No trucks, so we were right about the trucks. Uh, Richard was right about the trucks. Makes it a damn sight easy when there's no trucks. So Sunday for no trucks. Those dark clouds look dodgy. Looks like a storm ahead. Jet black skies. Could be a storm. We'll see. Looks like he's going to chuck it down. This is July.
You arrive on time 1.26 a.m. You are still on the fastest route. Swampy across the, the vineyards of uh, Germany. Don't even know where we are, to be fair. Don't know where we are. Another crazy trip. I ran out of energy, so I just banged into the sat nav nearest Ibis Hotel. It took me to Hellebron City. You just bang in the uh, local search and it puts the coordinates in for you, does all the work, it even makes the phone call and books it, it's fantastic. So here we go, underground parking, which is good, let's get our Ibis Hotel spot. So here we are, just uh, got as far as Hellebron, wherever that is. Oh, just listen to how sweet the engine sounds. Mint, ticking over, perfect. That bad boy. Car's driving like a dream, let's get checked into Okay, another successful park up at Ibis Heilbronn. So good underground parking here, we note that down. Although limited spaces, um, they're marked Ibis on the spots. So if you look, if you're doing this trip and you want to do what I've done here, then bear in mind, I think I've got about eight slots here, maybe more. But this is another Ibis one, yes it is. See. So, it's a good way of doing it, they're a reasonable hotel chain, 70, I think 79 euros with breakfast, I think, don't quote me on that, you can get a club card as well, 10%. Swampy, safe, let's punch it, let's get to Ghent, that's our last stop, Ghent, so, Ghent now. All checked in, Swampy all safe. Our penultimate stop takes us to, uh, do you know what? I still can't remember what it's called. Please, someone help me. It's called... Heil, Heilbronn. Heilbronn. And it's quite nice, I've got to say. I mean, have a look. Sort of 
all a modern bit here. I believe again another city that took a bit of a hit off the RAF I'm afraid. We've not left uh, a lot of original stuff but a lot of the big industrial cities got hit which is a damn shame because you lose all the architecture and it's all that legacy of the war but uh, Hal Halheim Leaving Halbron, Hill Hill Halbron. Leaving now and getting from the motorway. So if I hadn't stopped for fuel, we wouldn't have found them. So it's, the chances of that are astronomical. To actually, and not only that, but I had slowed down just before um, to take a phone call, which allowed them, by coincidence, to actually catch up. If I'd have gone, been going my normal pace, I think I'm travelling a little bit faster than the guys. I think I'm more averaging 75. But I don't know what speed they've been doing, but I've, I've been going reasonably quick so it's a total coincidence complete unbelievable Chances. 
I'd lost them a long time ago yesterday. We've stopped, started, stopped. I was just about to do a hands free call to Richard saying, uh, We're about to see you. And then I hear this beeping sound. The boys are alongside me. Just check it out. Woohoo! On the way to Ghent in convoy by coincidence. Hey, what the Mark 5's got some uh, go about it for 1600. Plenty of punch. Graham's not hanging about, look at this. He's doing well there, I think I'm really impressed uh, that we've all managed to re rejoin. And uh, with the, the weight carrying, he's, he's, he's fully laden. You know, they've got the kit, there's four of them in the car. Um, the twins there, um, and uh, Graham and everyone's in the car. And it's a 16 and it, it's pulling away great, so it shows 1600 lumps, a good lump. And, They've done a good job on the restoration, the maintenance, so I'm impressed. They're uh, making, you know, smooth, smooth moves on the on the autobahn with the boys. Um, really good, very impressive. Because that's cars just shows what a courtier can do. He, he's four up, you know, so great. Really good stuff, and uh, no doubt. Uh, Richard's going to be watching this film, so hello to the future, Richard. And everybody else with you, and uh, everyone in the car behind in the Porsche. I'm, I've still got to learn everybody's names. Graham and Richard, and then with the tw who's the brother? Um, twins, twins. I'll uh, I'll ask you when I go. I do apologise. I'm just trying to take in all the information. I need to go through everybody's names again. Okay. Uh, Sorry about that. I'll make sure I ask you. So Ghent, uh, three hours forty minutes, seventy-four miles till the next turn off. It's not necessarily going to be the same turn off that uh, Roy's Cortina to Cortina does, although it most likely will be. They're staying just outside Ghent, so I can't imagine why we wouldn't always be following each other now for the next couple of hours. Okay little clips along the way. Back in convoy. What's the coincidence of that? I don't know. Yeah. Pete's there. <laughs> fully loaded. I don't know. This thing moves for a fully loaded car. Yeah. That's fully a mover. Loaded. Graham's done the business Very on that. That is just uh, cruises, doesn't it? Well, Beauty. It just needs that five speed in. Yeah. Oh, it's a big it's difference. I'm running the... Once you get going, it's not too bad, but as you call out at slip road, you, you want to go off a fifth. Yeah, it's, uh, it does well, though. I was trying to work out the odds of, of meeting you at that point. Well, very, very you high odds. I have no idea where you were. You just, we just well, out Hill, I spotted you. You know what I was doing? Well, I'd gone slow because I was making a call. I was scrolling oh, through right. Right. on the sat-nav screen. I thought, where's Richard? He's got to be around here somewhere. And he beeped when I was doing it. <laughs> Swampy stops by the poppy fields. Little 
just saw a little photo opportunity with sat nav took us off road Sorry, Belgium now. Belgium now. We made it to Belgium. No problems. Oh, well, the windows are down because it's hot. Seventeen minutes from Ghent, uh, craziest bit of the whole journey, the most dangerous part, difficult to drive and navigate, ring road round, round Antwerp, coming onto the road to, uh, to Ghent, very tricky, absolute mad free for all, yeah I suppose it's the worst part of the trip that, pretty heavy going it was, cars coming in, coming out, all over the place, so watch out if you're on that trip, ring road round Antwerp, it's trouble, it's tricky. On target. Keep right, then keep right. Coming to Gent now. On target. Last stop. Gent before the ferry. Overnight. Stay keep now. Right. Here we go. Sharp, then keep right. Here we go. Let's get into the city. It's nice here. Uh, lucky break. Exactly the same spot I parked in the other day. Right outside the uh, the hotel. I'll see if there's any underground spaces, but other than that, we've got this one. I'm gonna get a ticket. We say goodbye now to Ghent. It's Tuesday morning. It's uh, Channel Tunnel time, and we say goodbye now to Ghent. Nice town. A lot, a lot of old Gothic architecture to be discovered. If Indeed, you would like a trip here. I must have left my house today because I always do. My train, I'm certain, left the station just when it was due. I must have read the morning paper going into town. And having gotten through the editorial, no doubt I must have frowned I must have made my desk around the quarter after nine With letters to be read and heaps of papers waiting to be signed I must have gone to lunch at half past twelve or so, the usual place, the usual bunch And still on top of this, I'm pretty sure it must have rained The day before you came I must have lit my seventh cigarette at half past two And at the time I never even noticed I was blue I must have kept on dragging through the business of the day Without really knowing anything I hid a part of me away At five I must have left There's no exception to the rule A matter of routine I've done it every 
Christian side finish school. Oh, 50 minutes away from the port from the Eurotunnel. 50 minutes to the Eurotunnel. Don't know where we are. France, I think. Tunnel approach, tunnel approach. Queue for the tunnel now straight through the customs and straight on into the uh, the boarding area there just timed that well checked in on the automatic reg plate thing it just checks your reg if you've already got your ticket prints out your boarding pass straight away then you just wave straight through if you're running on time so we've done that all right so just waiting to board the train now in the queue and here we have one of the turnoffs down the ramp into the train itself See just ahead of me the train now, I'm hoping we get on it. What do you see but a Cortina headlining? This is the opportunity. I get to have 30 minutes sleep on the Channel Tool train. So I am now upside down. Uh, it's a weird feeling because the car rocks about. It rocks me to sleep, which is I like. It's like being on the ferry or the sleeper trains. So you, you recline back, we hit the bed lever, adjust on the seat and slide it all the way under the footrest, um, under the steering wheel. Sorry if I sound sleepy. And then uh, you sort of just uh, sit back and uh, have a sleep for half an hour if you want. There are toilets on board, but that's about it. I don't think it's a shop or anything, so you've got to make sure you've got a, a bottle of water at least and maybe something to eat if you didn't want to get ripped off at the tunnel shops, which are horrendously expensive. The rest area and the uh, tunnel entrances whilst they're very good and clean and well stocked they're not cheap as you can expect they're cashing in so the car rocks about swampy rocks about I'll get a little clip from outside I've had 15 minute power sleep I'll get another clip from outside hoping this ain't making you guys at home seasick it shouldn't do so probably halfway underneath the tunnel by now and guess, guess what I've done 1000 odd miles or at least 900 on the continent and uh, they've just said on the PA the Ebbetway is closed so there's no way out I'm going to have to go around the coast that'll add another 3 hours I would have thought 2 hours onto the trip which means it's going to take me 10 hours to get home so it's not going to be doable in a day safely if that's the case I'll see what the TomTom Tom traffic uh, system says when we uh, get out of the tunnel but so far I'm 20 con uh, announced over the Eurotunnels PA that the M20 is closed northbound so London bound which is the way we want oh dear Loading begins. Safety checks will be carried out after the unloading doors have been opened. This may take a few minutes. Please remember to take your vehicle out of first. Right, we're leaving. We're in England now, but the M20 is closed. Or at least a 16 minute delay. It might be open actually. We'll see. So London now, 
uh, not London, towards London. 500 yards, keep right. Let's just see how bad this M20 is. London, then take the motorway. Not too bad, a 45 minute delay. We're coming up to the M20, uh, M25 soon. London heading, then we're up, up the M40, Oxford, heading to, uh, to home in the north. So, yeah, not too bad in the end. Lost 45 minutes, I'll chop a bit off the quick keep going. Uh, we're nearly at the end of the film. Brave for watching the extra bonus footage. Thanks for sticking with us. I hope you got hypnotized. M25. Good so far. M25. Stafford now. Stafford. 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 So here we are at Stafford Services now. No hold ups. A look at this for uh, grease and grime. You can see the aerodynamics of the car, how it works with these streaks. Uh, you can see how the, the airflow must go over the bonnet. Just follow these patterns. It shows you where the airflow is. So, a grubby swampy there. That's a good 500 miles off of. Uh, grime no more it's well, I've not cleaned it since Italy so Italy to here's uh, 900 950 miles so nearly a thousand miles of uh, grime on there so we'll have to get him cleaned up when he's uh, he's back home I know I call him him just the way that it is so my last push now home I think it's just, I'm at Stafford, so that's only a, an hour home for me now. There's a bit of traffic at the M6 because they're doing the managed motorway still. So there's a bit of slow traffic there, but I'm used to that with the car shows down in the, the Midlands anyway, where I broke the back of it. I had a, a double espresso to keep me going, and we're going to call it a day. We're going to call it a wrap for the video. I'm going to stop and call it a wrap here, unless I see anything interesting en route which I don't think we will, I think you'd be just about bored of motorway uh, footage now so demobilise, fire swampy up and we'll call it a day for you, thanks for sticking with us on the part um, the, uh, the bonus footage, sorry I'm getting a bit tired now bonus footage, thanks for sticking with us for that, this is going to be a hell of a video for me to edit uh, not even know what I'm gonna do with the edit on this film yet I'm wondering if I should just do a full-on uh, live you know just as is footage unedited and then do a condensed film so you can pick either a fast-forward film time-lapse or you can pick if you wanted to just I know some people just send, say to me well you can just watch road movies even though nothing's going on you get hypnotized by the traffic and the motorway because it's a mark 3 they just like watching it so I might do that as well let us know what you think Call it a day, uh, I get back and uh, start uh, unpacking and I'll get the, I'm anxious to upload all the footage and start uh, chewing through some editing. I'll be getting back about sat nav here, what's the sat nav say? 7.06, so what, one and a half hours, 74 miles to go. Let's just, uh, let's do the final push. Over and out, I hope you enjoyed the film. Swampy goes to Cortina, all done. Over and out. That's it, Cortina to Cortina, it's over, we'll see you next time, that was it, what a trip, 2,300 miles, probably more actually if you count all the, the detours off into town for the hotels, hope you enjoyed the film, definitely over and out now, thank you and good night.